Hi everyone, I'm Emma Hall and today I'm in Belper talk talking to Adrian Farmer who is the coordinator of the World Heritage Site um, about the upcoming food festival which is on Sunday. So... Right, okay. So if you'd like to just um, introduce yourself and tell us a bit about yourself. I'm Adrian Farmer, I'm the Heritage Coordinator for the Dillard Valley Mills World Heritage Site. Uh, so involved in all sorts of aspects of the World Heritage Site promotion, um, but also um, try and look after it, um, educate people about it, um, generally uh, help people to feel the love about how important this uh, this area is, and Belp is a big part of the World Heritage Site. Okay, and how does the Winter Food Festival benefit Belper? The the food festival um, is is a great part of, of the, uh, the town's festivities this time of the year. It's um, it, it's just a a great chance for so many people to turn out and uh, and enjoy the town. And yes, there are lots of stores that they'll only get to see that day, but also they get a chance to see uh, and appreciate the uh, uh, the town. Uh, all those all those shops, you know, it's such a fantastic, quirky place to, to visit. So it's all about really. Okay, and how has it changed throughout the years? Um, it's got bigger. There's a lot more stalls than there used to be. Um, there's more. It, it's it's food and drink now rather than just food, which is good. It's it's expanded, it, uh, and um, there's lots of extras that keep being added on because people want to be part of something that's, that's successful, you know. So certainly it's grown. Uh, and, and the number of people um, who, who participate has grown as well. And uh, the introduction of the slow shopping hour will be this year. Can you explain what it is and how it benefits visitors to the market? Yeah, it, it got tested last year and uh, now it's, it's properly formalised. It's, it's a great idea. Half an hour before everything's supposed to start at 10, from 9.30, people who aren't able to cope with the crowds, uh, people with... Um, disabilities or who just don't like that, that sort of that throng of people mm -hmm. uh, they get that opportunity to have a look around and enjoy the uh, the shops and, and the and the stalls before everybody else fantastic way it makes it so much more accessible uh, that inclusivity is is really what Belp is becoming all about now it's fantastic and how will it be different this year compared to other years um, this year there's, um, there's again it has grown again there, mm. there, there are things to, to see and do that uh, there hasn't been before um, there's uh, they, they keep adding a little bit on so it's that you know you've got Strutt Street and Campbell Street as well it's not just King Street plenty of plenty of choice plenty of things going on it's gonna be it's gonna be a good festival okay um, is the World Heritage Site doing anything to celebrate it? Um, yeah, we're doing something slightly different this time. Uh, at the end of the uh, festival, um, at five o'clock in number 28 in the marketplace, I'm going to be giving a talk on Belper food and festivities. So talking about um, historically uh, Belper's um, food stories, if you like, uh, but also how Belper has celebrated Christmas over the years. Uh, and a fair few snow pictures as well. It's going to be really a celebration of the town, a celebration of Christmas, and a celebration of food, which you know, perfect. I would have said. <laughs> um, how do other events held throughout the year affect the area? Um, there's lots uh, of events going on. Um, you know, particularly around May, you've got the arts festival, you've got the arts trail, you've got open houses. It, it just gives the town a proper buzz. You talk to people about Belper and that more and more people are recognising oh, Belper because they've heard that there's so much going on and it's a great place to live. People um, certainly want to live here and, uh, and want to be part of, of the events. It's always challenging getting uh, enough volunteers and the rest to, to do those things, but actually it's, uh, it's incredible what's achieved and, and, and the town's got a proper buzz about it. Do you think it has become more popular in recent years, the food festivals? Yeah, um, certainly there, there seems to be a good few thousand turn out for it. Mm -hmm. Over the course of the, the day, you know, it could be as much as 10,000 people uh, in the town, which is phenomenal. It's, it's incredible to see. Uh, and um, it, it's, 
it's just amazing that it, it just keeps on going, keeps growing, mm. and, and people want to take part in it. Um, do you think Love Belper will have any impact on the success of the festival this year? Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, it, Love Belper, it's still a, a brand new campaign, but it, it's um, so through social media, it's certainly starting to attract people's attention now. But the, the great thing was Eleanor Tomlinson switching on the Christmas lights uh, and, and, and in front of about 4,000 people, getting them all to shout, we love Belper, we love Belper. Uh, that's exactly the kind of thing it needs. And I think, yeah, uh, certainly that Love Belper campaign is fantastic and, and it's going to grow, it will grow. Um, why do you think Belper is so popular with independent businesses? It's quirky. Um, we got, when we got World Heritage uh, status, one of the first things we were able to get was um, 2.4 million worth of grant money, which uh, was about restoring a building, but a big part of that was getting the shop front sorted. So there's a lot of, of shop fronts with all those sort of Edwardian detailing uh, that the Edwardians did so well, mm. back in place. Uh, so that there's some really attractive looking shops. You know, if you actually stand back, don't just look through the window, but actually look at the shops themselves. And that all builds up, you know, if, you, if you've got enough of them. Um, Belper looks right, it looks like mm. a historic town. Uh, it looks like an interesting town centre. Yes, we've got all that, but around Poundland, there's a, a big chunk of 1960s, 70s uh, style um, development, which is a shame, but there's so much around it that the town looks good. People enjoy walking around and, and, and um, just just feeling the love, really, of, of what a fantastic looking town it is, but as well, it's, the, it's a good mix of independence. Compared to a lot of towns, um, we've got a good mix. Um, every town has a lot of charity shops now and people say, oh, look, you know, hairdressers, but great cafe culture as well. It, Belper's got, it's got one of the best mixes, certainly uh, in this county. And do you enjoy living or being in Belper and why? Yeah, I love, uh, I love being in Belper. It's been a long time now. I can't really um, believe that I haven't been here forever. It feels like that sometimes, but in a good way. It's, um, Belper's in my blood now. It's it's a fantastic place to live. Uh, it's got so much going for it. So much history, layers and layers of history. Um, great people, uh, and it seems to attract great people. Uh, it's it's just a fantastic place to be. Love it. Good place to shop. Good place to live. Good place to work. And how do you hope that Belper will progress in the future? A big thing is to get the mill sorted. The uh, what it needs is, is, a, is a proper uh, scheme that will go forward and make sure that those, those mills are, are restored properly, are a big part of, of Belper's offer because they should be. They should be uh, attracting an international audience. It'd be great to get an international um, tourism set coming in and, and, and enjoying the town like, like the rest of us. Uh, so yeah, the mills is the, is the key thing. Other than that, making sure that we need new development, but it needs to be steady, not in huge amounts. It needs to be in the right place. It needs to be at the right kind. Uh, and hopefully that will help if, if people keep supporting their local shops, then everything will uh, will be uh, good and, and dandy. It will be a good place to live and, and carry on being a fantastic place to live. And what what is the plan for the mills? What's that going to be hopefully turned into? Um, well, at the moment, the owners are looking to put in 120 apartments, mm. which will be tiny, but um, they haven't really looked at how well, they would restore the building. Uh, I just don't believe they've, they've looked at it properly and well enough uh, to get a good outcome. Uh, we need to make sure that it's, it's high quality, it's a, a fantastic um, building that people are going to want to be um, involved in part of uh, that the public will have access um, we're, we've still got a fair way to go I think but um, we've got to get a good got, got to get a good outcome mm. and do you want to add anything else uh, Merry Christmas <laughs> uh, and uh, I, hope, I hope people will come to the fair enjoy it uh, and um, and take part in Belper's fantastic Christmas offer okay lovely right.
Okay, so that was Adrian Farmer and we just discussed um, a bit about Belper and I hope you've all enjoyed it. Enjoyed it. So thank you for uh, joining um, and the food festival is on Sunday, this Sunday, the 9th of December, 10am till 4pm.